Hi, Harvest Chapel, and, uh, and everyone that's listening and watching. This Gill, and I'm going to be teaching through Jeremiah with Joe Witt Church on Sunday nights. Uh, some of you know because we've already announced it. Joe actually already taught through. And uh, sorry if you guys are logging on and it's freezing on you. We have a little bit of a poor connection. But anyways, Joe taught through the introduction in chapter one. And as I've explained before, and I'll explain again, is that uh, we're not doing Jeremiah verse by verse by verse by verse. Uh, it's like as if you go to a game. You know, I really love going to baseball games and basketball games and football games and even games I don't know about. I used to wrestle. I love to go to wrestling matches. Now the WWE stuff, that's fake. I like the real stuff, the real deal. And so I go to Purdue and go to those wrestling matches. And I enjoy the pro levels. And I enjoy all the way down to like the little kids. I, like, I love to go and watch SJ play his basketball. And, uh, and what I enjoy about the games is like you, you all, the, all the things that go into that game. All the timeouts, all the, uh, the fouls, all the... The little things that don't show up on the ESPN highlight reels, the the things that don't show up even in the stats, and um, and I enjoy that. I enjoy the atmosphere of the games, especially baseball. Like I would, I have no desire to ever watch baseball on TV, um, but I enjoy going to baseball. I I really enjoy it, uh, and uh, I remember. A long time ago, Trent O'Brien and I took some people to the Cincinnati Reds game, and it was a blast, and um, and I just enjoyed it. But I also enjoy the ESPN highlights because I don't like watching TV. I don't like watching sports on TV that well. Like I'll watch the Super Bowl. I'll watch uh, every once in a while a Pacers game, maybe a Purdue game, but I just don't enjoy it that well. And so I enjoy the ESPN highlights. I enjoy it getting on ESPN.com, filling, looking at those highlights, looking at the stats, and moving on. And that's more of what Joe and I are going to be doing on Sunday nights, is going through the highlight reels of Jeremiah. And we're not going to be hitting verse by verse. Uh, David Guzik, he's a teacher, and, uh, and he has uh, his own website. And, uh, but you can get on there uh, and, and look at his website and see... Uh, verse by verse by verse teaching if you're wanting that and so we're going to be going through Jeremiah through all of this and as I'm talking my wife is trying to pin um, the lyrics up for the two songs that she's going to sing and uh, so were you able to do that Angela? I just got sent yeah okay she just got sent and so she's going to uh, sing a couple of songs of praise and then I'll be coming in with Jeremiah and I'm just going to pray here and she'll start all right. God, we come to you, and we thank you that we get to be together um, all the time, that really you, Holy Spirit, even though we are separate, we are united by you. And, uh, and we praise you for that. And, and God, I thank you that you have called uh, each of us to a different ministry. Not a ministry just to be at the church, but a ministry as in this is our life. Uh, God, you called Jeremiah to be a prophet in a, in a hard time in, the, in Judah's history. And, uh, and God, you've called us to live in this unusual time. And I ask that, that you would speak to us uh, as we just go through these next few chapters of Jeremiah. And Lord, I, uh, right now I just lift up this coming up time of worship. And I said it would be a sweet aroma to you, God. And it's your name I pray. Amen. All right, here's my lovely wife. And, uh, and happy Mother's Day to Angela Gill. I made her a chocolate tort. Uh, it's really easy, actually. <laughs> hi, Joe. Thanks for saying hi to my hand. Hi, Marsha. And um, Mar or Linda. See you, Phyllis, too. Sorry, guys, on there. That was cool. All right.
Thank you, Joy. Happy Mother's Day to you, too. Alright, this next song is um, one that we uh, haven't played before, to my knowledge, but I just learned it, and it's called Calling Out to You, and I just really feel like it's our, uh, like a heart's cry of our, of our church right now. We've been kind of meditating on Second Chron- or Second Chronicles 7.14, and really this song is birthed from that verse. So um, it's very simple. If you can't see my comment with the lyrics, uh, maybe you could Google it. It's called Calling Out to You by Tommy Walker. Um, but also, I will just play it through once, and then I'll play it through again so you can join me if you'd like.
God, may you just be glorified what happens here tonight. In your son's name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hi, Jessica. I saw your text just now. Sorry. <laughs> My wife is able to multitask, and I am unable to do that. So if you're messaging, then hopefully my wife is catching on to it for me because uh, I, I, I'm going to be honest, it's really hard for me to, to look at there, look at some of my notes, re see where I'm at. Um, she's just a lot smarter than I am. I mean, that's just the honest truth. And, uh, and I'm thankful that she is the mother of my kids, and, and what a... Uh, a privilege it is to know her and uh, and uh, to be married to her. And so, uh, but to all you other uh, mothers out there, happy Mother's Day. And if you just heard a, a growling, that's my dog. I've never heard her really growl like that before, so it's unusual. But uh, I just wanted to start out here with a, key, a few key verses uh, from Jeremiah. And... Uh, that I think kind of goes, skims through the whole book, really. And, uh, and this one is in uh, chapter one. You don't have to flip there, because this, I mean, it's uh, really through different chapters. And the first one is chapter one, verses four and five. It says, Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I adorn, ordained you a prophet to the nations. And that's God speaking to Jeremiah. Jeremiah was like, I, I don't know. I, I basically, he's like, he's unsure. Like, you, you're not calling me. I'm too young. I, I can't do these things. And, but God says, uh, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And you got to think, for Jeremiah, he really has an extremely hard ministry where he watches uh, his countrymen and women fall. And they don't repent. And, uh, and he has to deliver this message of hardship to them. And sees really no fruit. And how hard that would be. And then the next one is chapter 2, uh, verse 19, which we'll discuss a little bit tonight. But it says, Your own wickedness will correct you. And your backslidings will rebuke you. Know therefore and see that it is an evil and bitter thing that you have forsaken the Lord your God, and the fear of me is not in you, says the Lord God of hosts. And I choose this one because that really sums up like what happens in Judah. The, uh, this is the southern kingdom is who Jeremiah is pro uh, prophesying to, is that they don't ever repent, they don't ever turn away, and, uh, um, and, God, and God tells them it. And it says uh, that you're, you, you have no fear of me, you on me, and uh, and like your backsliding uh, is going to get the best of you. And then the the last one is really for the future. Uh, Jeremiah chapter thirty one, and this is thirty one through thirty four. Uh, the verses. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant which they broke, though I was a husband to them, says the Lord, but this covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. No more shall every man teach his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall know me. The least of them to the greatest of them, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and their sin, and I will remember no more. And, uh, and that's just the promise of the future uh, and, the, and the new covenant that's going to be happening. And, uh, and, that, and so those... Those three verses kind of like it's like Jeremiah's life, then it's Judah, kind of a quick little brief uh, met, uh, verse, and then for into the future. And so those three verses I think are big in this uh, in Jeremiah here. And then if I was to just to make a quick overview, a quick the uh, like, like a couple sentences 
of Jeremiah to tell someone this is what Jeremiah is the book of Jeremiah is about. I put Jeremiah, a prophet for the Lord, called to tell fellow countrymen and women to repent and turn to the Lord. They in return become harder and even less faithful. All the while, no converts we see uh, from this prophet. A, as a man, he remains faithful and he is successful in the eyes of God. Due to his choice in the face of opposition, uh, he remains success, or faithful and, uh, and he fails to see any converts. He agonizes over the people. He's known as the weeping prophet. And he does this while prescribing their impending doom. And, uh, and, and that would be a hard message to do. It would be very hard. Jeremiah was called uh, at a young age to be a prophet during a time of Judah, which is a kingdom. And he also refers to it as Jerusalem because Jerusalem is the capital of Judah. And, uh, uh, and they are backsliding. And then they'll be eventually led into captivity. And how ho horrible it would be. You know, you watch the people that you're trying to minister to just to continue to, to stay focused on going the path that leads to death, that leads to the slaughter. And uh, it's almost as if what he says is just some background music. You know, is like I, I like to put on music uh, in the background as I cook and I do things even when I study. I like to put on background music when I play games with the kids. I like to put on background music. And I just and it's not because I just want to fill the air all the time, but I enjoy uh, listening to music. And uh, so I put on some John Mark McMillan. I'll put on uh, some rappers like KB or Andy Minio, and uh, and then uh, Josh Garrels. I'll put on him and, and, and others, you know. And and I enjoy it. And uh, now Phil Wickham, he's another one that I really enjoy. And John Foreman, and I enjoy it. But this is as if as if they're having this background music playing and not even listening, you know. The like I mean, you guys have probably been in that situation where you have some music on. Maybe you're walking through Target and you're not really paying attention to it, and then all of a sudden you hear a few few verses, and then you like you just get a little shimmer in your shoulders and uh, shimmy. Shimmy. My <laughs> wife corrects me, so she's always good. You know, she danced for a long time in, in school, so she knows all these type of moves. I just, I just, I just run. Like they say, hey, Sai, you run that way, I run that way. And, uh, me, Sai. Me, Sai. <laughs> that's who I was, and uh, I'm just kidding. But, uh, but uh, you know, is that uh, you guys have probably been in the same spot, though, where, like, people are saying stuff, you're not really listening, and you just keep on going. But these people here are hearing the Word of God directly uh, to them from a prophet that is hearing from God, you know, and speaking to them on their situations in life currently. It's not like some background music at Target or Walmart or whatever and you're like, oh, I like this song, and, uh, and you sing a few verses with it. Or, but um, this is Jeremiah trying to speak into your into their lives, and God will try to speak into our lives, and sometimes we don't, we just don't listen. We as, act as if it's background music, and uh, and and may we be more and more in tune with the Holy Spirit, and uh, and I think that's a big thing in this quarantine time. That we've had, and then that we so we slowly open up uh, uh, into public, and what all that means with the get back on track by Holcomb, um, uh, that we would continue to seek His face above all things, and that we'd be in tune with the Holy Spirit. And so, let's get started here, and um, uh, and we'll start in chapter two, and we're going to go through. Chapter 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 tonight. And so I was telling you earlier, it's going to be the ESV and highlight reel. And uh, so I'm hoping you guys are ready. And uh, and so just a, a quick, um, we got two sections here really tonight. And uh, it's from uh, chapter 2, verse 1, chapter 3, verse 5. 
And that main theme is God uses an analogy uh, based out of marriage to show how faithful that God is as a husband and how unfaithful Judah is as a bride and that they're playing the harlot. And, uh, and then the, the other section that we'll go through is um, from verse 6 of chapter 3 until the end of chapter 6. And uh, in this chapter, Jeremiah warns Judah that they too will fall like uh, Israel, the northern kingdom, and be led into captivity. And Judah does not turn away from idolatry, does not repent. Uh, so it is stated in 2 Kings chapter 23, verses 25 through 27. And they will be destroyed as well, is what we find out. And, uh, and so, let's get started in chapter 2 and verse 1. And you're probably thinking, verse 1 already? Well, we got a lot of highlights here. And uh, verse 1 is a good one to start at. Moreover, and I'm reading out of the New King James. I know Tom reads out of the, or teaches out of the New American Standard. And I, I teach out of the New King James. Uh, uh, verse 1. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Go and cry in the hearing of Jerusalem, saying, Thus says the Lord. So this is Jeremiah's first thing that he's going to go and tell the people as a prophet for God to Judah. And the, and the Lord says this. I remember you, the kindness of your youth, the love of your betrothal, when you went after me in the wilderness, in a land not sown, Israel was holiness to the Lord, the first fruits of his increase. All that devour him will, will, him will offend. Disaster will come upon them, says the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel, thus says the Lord. And then he starts speaking some more. And I just want to go back up to that uh, part in verse 2, it says, I remember you. You know, that's a past tense word. And the NLT it even says, I remember I remember how eager you were. You know, and and it's, it's like, oh, like if God would say that to, about me, it's like, I remember how eager you were. And it's like, well, well God, am, am I not as eager now? You know, Judah should have been like done doing a heart check and like like whoa wait where where am I at with God right now? Am I not eager for God anymore? Am I not eager for His ways anymore? And uh, and they and they don't they don't they continue to press on. You know it re kind of reminds me. You know I on the first time I cut my grass this year. I got out my lawnmower and uh, and I put some gas in it and and the mower usually I mean I just I usually just crank it one time I pull it so I push lawnmower so I just pull it one time and that bad boy it starts up. I was given it's a Honda. I was given it by uh, a couple that used to come to harvest, uh, Matt and Courtney Richards, and, uh, and they moved from where they were to another place and they gave me their push mower and a great mower. And it usually, and it's like, and I just, I just go along and I just, ah, oh, this is good. And, uh, but this time, didn't start, didn't start, didn't start. And finally, after a few times, it finally starts, but it's just a sputter. And it's like, and I'm just, and I'm not a mechanic, really. I, I've changed my pads, changed my oil, I've changed spark plugs, I've done, I've done other things. Uh, and I can do those things. I'm just not someone that is able to to uh, to realize, hey, this is the actual problem. Typically, like it takes it takes me to uh, have some help to figure out what the problem is, and then I can fix it. I just need help uh, trying to figure out what that problem is. And I, I and so I uh, was reading this book, uh, a missionary book, uh, on a guy whose life is his name's Nate Saint. And he was with Jim Elliott, and uh, and they end up getting um, killed by some Indians, and they ended up uh, Aka Indians in uh, in Ecuador, and they uh, end up coming to know the Lord. But anyways, this is before that happens, and Nate Saint uh, is his name, 
and he uh, flies an airplane all over down in the jungle and he was just listing off some problems and one of those was fuel and so I was like I can hear his just like about his airplane and I was like man I wonder if I wonder what's going on and, and I and and he was talking about having his gas line plugged up for the airplane and I was like man I wonder if my fuel is just bad I used fuel from last year and uh, and so I went out and got some fresh gas and brought it back, dumped out the stuff that was already in there, and poured the fresh gas in there, and uh, and I and I put and I uh, put it back and I just yank on it one time and it was like, Whoosh! and I was like, yes, this is what I'm talking about, and I'm just pushing and uh, and you know I'm out there prouncing like a proud, uh, like galloping because I'm excited my mower's working again because I, I was kind of my heart sank when it wasn't working because like oh man. Like, what's going to happen? You know, and, and eventually, I mean, even with that bad gas, I still cut all my grass. It just didn't look as nice. And it, and like, I, like I was really hoping the whole time with that bad gas that I, it would, like, all of a sudden just go, poof, and, uh, and fire and be good, you know? And, uh, but it never did. And, uh, and it just kind of, I think about this, is like, man, that gas was good last year. I remember it being good last year. It worked last year. But I needed fresh gas for this year. And, uh, and that's the same with our lives. Like, we are needing fresh fuel. Like, there are some good things that happened to us last year. There are some good things that happened to us before the quarantine. There are some good things that might have happened to us when we were on the strict lockdown. Now we can go out, and tomorrow we can start going to some restaurants and whatever. But um, we need continual the fresh gas. We need to keep that going. Because, I mean, the, the, the old gas, it got me through, and I was able to cut my lawn, but it didn't look as nice. And it was and it was hard for me to go through all of it, because it would just disheartened me step by step by step. And if we don't get that fresh gas fr- through the Holy Spirit from God, then as we continue to take steps in life, it's going to get harder and harder and harder. We're going to get disheartened as we go. And, uh, and so I encourage you, get out there and get your fresh gas. And it's right now. And so, uh, and if, and that was just a joke, if you didn't get it, your gas is your word and go into God, right? And so, um, just, I'm just thankful that I finally got that cut. I didn't want to get a letter on my, on my door from the government, the La Policia, and be in trouble. All right, so let's go on to verse 7. I brought you into a bountiful country to eat its fruit and its goodness. But when you entered, you defiled my life and made my heritage an abomination. And we'll also read here verse 8. Then the priest did not say, Where is the Lord? And those who handle the law did not know me. The rulers also transgressed against me. The prophets prophesied by Baal and walked after the things that do not profit. So in verse 7, I got saying, hey, I brought you into this bountiful country. You know, even when we look back in the time when the, the Hebrews are wandering in the wilderness and Moses is still leading them, he sends the 12 spies. They come back and they never said that the, that the country was bad in the sense it wasn't producing fruit. They were amazed by how much fruit it was producing. They were just scared because they're, they're afraid of the opposition of the people there. And they got fearful of man. And so here God's just continuing and saying, Hey, I brought you into this land that is bountiful, that is fruitful, yet what do you do with it? What do you do with it? And then he, t- and he tells us, he says, But when you entered, you defiled my land and made my heritage an abomination. We, they defiled it. When God brings us into different things, into different trials and everything, are we defiling what God's wanting us to do? Or are we being obedient to what He wants us to do? It might not be a land of bountiful fruit. It might be a valley of shadow and death. But God is calling us to walk faithfully. And, uh, and what are we doing? We can, we're going to see how Jeremiah, he walks in the valley of shadow of death through his whole time as a prophet. 
and uh, uh, and he remains faithful and is counted as a success in the eyes of God because he was faithful. And then there in verse 8, it says, Then the priest did not say, Where is the Lord? They're, so what they're saying is like, like they, they don't even know where the Lord is. And it says, Those who will handle the law did not know me. And the NLT, it says, Those who were teachers didn't even seek me. That they even ignored me. Could you imagine like Tom ignoring God and he coming up and teaching every Sunday? And uh, how hard that would be, you know? Or any other teachers here. May that never be said of, of us. And uh, and so that's one thing that I've really enjoyed about this uh, this past week and this week that we're going to end the harvest is that is that we know that Tom, our pastor, is seeking God, and uh, and he's and he's canceled the Bible studies so that we can have a time of prayer. Of shutting everything down, it's kind of like almost like a reset. Like, hey, you know, you guys they're doing some things right. Let's see what else we can do that's uh, that I want you to do. Maybe there's something new, and uh, and so Tom is saying, let's seek God and see what He has in this time. And uh, because we're not wanting to just to be a, a ritual factory, you know, that's what these people would have been if they are teaching God's word without seeking God. It would just be a ritual. It would be a religion that people demise. You know, and uh, and that and that happens. You know, people get stuck in this r- ritual and this just real religiosity of doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting it to just continue to work as if it as if it's a lamp that has a genie and you just rub it. It's gonna keep working. It's gonna keep working. We know that there's no genies and lamps. It's all made up. And uh, and so why would we think that if we kept on same thing with God, that it would work the exact same way all the time. Because through Scripture, God doesn't do the same thing over and over and over. He's alive and He's active and He uses the people that are that are faithful, and He uses how how they how He has gifted them to be able to glorify His name. You know, if you are a person who is in uh, in some sort of um, factory job. I'm not saying quit your factory job. I'm saying you learn how to do your job well, but then as you're doing that, ask God, how can I love these people around me? How can I do it? And I'm, I worked at a factory for a year, and so I don't know for you guys who've been there for 30 some years, and I've worked as worked at a factory all, pretty much all my life. He's been at Donnelly's over 30 years and still working there. And sometimes I'm like, man, same thing over and over and over. But uh, he does it. And, uh, and so I encourage you guys, wherever you work, if it's a factory, if, if you're a um, home mom, seek the Lord and see what he's doing. But that prayer uh, we're doing for, ch- for our church, Monday through Friday, it starts at 7, ends around 8.30. We're doing it on Zoom, and we're doing it in the church building. And so uh, come out and enjoy. Just come at least once. If you guys attend a study, I know Tom is saying, if you attend a Bible study, come the night that you attend that study or log in on Zoom. Next few verses we're going to go through is verses 11 through 13, still in chapter 2. Has a nation changed its gods, which are not gods? But my people have changed their glory for what does not profit. Be astonished, O heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be very desolate, says the Lord. For my people have two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewn themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no... no. And, uh, and, I, and I read the New Living Translation for my devos, and, uh, and so you'll hear me quote some of the NLT because um, I'm, I'm not the smartest sometimes NLT is a little bit of a plainer language for me to understand. And so I'm going to read these few verses in the NLT. It says, Has any na- nation ever traded its gods for new ones, even though they are not gods at all? 
Yet my people have exchanged their glorious God for worthless idols. And I think that makes it so much easier to understand is that, is that God was saying, you have the God who is the one that created the universe, the one that created the sun, the one that created all the stars, the one that created all the planets, has created you are living on that has created you. The one who cares so much about you. The one that knows the hairs on your head. And uh, yet, you have exchanged him for a worthless idol. You created it. And then he says, Then the heavens are shocked, it says in verse 12, at such a thing and shocked back in horror and dismay. And I mean, it, it was like, like you, got, you guys were led into this beautiful land as flowing with milk and honey, and uh, um, and as bountiful with fruit. And yet, you exchange all of this to run after your own idols, things that you think is important. And then here it says in verse 13, For my people have done two evil things. They have abandoned me, the fountain of living water, and have dug for themselves cracked cisterns that can hold no water at all. What is in the cup that you drink? You know, what are you drinking right now? I'm getting ready to drink a glass of water. Do you like coffee? Get some caffeine. Do you like milk? Get your strong bones. Do you like Mountain Dew? Get jacked up on sugar. Or are you drinking living water, the Holy Spirit? Jesus drank the cup of death so that we could have the opportunity to drink the. He died on that cross to take the penalty of sin for us so that we don't have to face it. And then he rose on that third day to break those chains of death, that chain to the grave, so that we can be offered life and the cup of life, really. You know, and, and God has that fountain of the living water, what we all long for. Well, what are you drinking? Verse 19. Your own wickedness will correct you, and your own backslidings will rebuke you. Know therefore and see that it is an evil and bitter thing that you have forsaken the Lord your God, and the fear of me is not in you, says the Lord God of hosts. I think this is, as I said, a key verse, because it really shows them uh, where they're at, that they are... Uh, so entrenched in their sin that they have this prophet come and tell them all these things, but they have no desire to be to correct their ways. They have no desire to repent. They just continue on the path, and uh, you will see the bitterness that's going to bring into your life. Chapter three. Verses 1 through 5. God calls out their sin and uh, in this. And it's not fun when that happens, you know? Like sometimes God's called out my sin and I'm like, ah. Are you sure? I mean, in the, but God's always true, right? We can always trust in Him. And, uh, um, and, and He is always there to also help us when we repent. You know, they don't repent, and they and they just continue on. So verses 1 through 5, we'll read, read here. They say, if a man divorces his wife, uh, and she goes from him and becomes another man's, may he return to her again. Would not that land be greatly polluted? But you have played the harlot with many lovers. Yet return to me, says the Lord. See, listen, like he, he's saying, you've played the harlot. You've, you've done these things. You've wandered out. You've looked for the other things. You looked for these idols, for the security and money. You've looked for the security and, uh, and people. You've looked for the security and having things. you look for the security and to setting up for yourself for the future. But come back to me. Come to me. And he's, and he's like, I'll still, I'll still, I still want you. He's always wanting to embrace us. 
Verse 10. Lift up your eyes to the desolate heights and see, where have you not lain with men? By the road you have sat for them, like an Arabian in the wilderness, and you have polluted the land with your harlotries and your wickedness. Therefore the showers have been withheld, and there have been no latter rain. You have had a harlot's forehead. You refuse to be ashamed. Will you not uh, from this time cry to me? My father, you are the guide of my youth. Will he remain angry forever? Will he keep it to the end? Behold, you have spoken and done evil things as you were able. And, uh, and really, um, God is just saying, you've done all these things, but still come back to me. You know, and that, it really just re- reminds me of John 1, 16. And, uh, and he is just, and, and just a little bit there. It says, grace upon grace upon grace upon grace. You think about, this is like a husband calling out to his wife saying, you've been cheating on me. But I still love you. And I want you to be my wife. Forsake the other things and come to me. And, uh, and so God is saying, he's like, Leave those things and come to me. Come to me. And, uh, uh, and, and I think grace upon grace is just like a layered cake. Grace upon grace upon grace upon grace upon grace upon grace upon grace. You know, it's like, it like you got sin, he's got grace. You've got heartache, he's got grace. You've got problems, he's got grace. You got hang-ups, he's got grace. You have addictions, he's got grace. You have trouble with life. He's got grace. And and that's what he wants you to know. And he's always calling. So now we're getting ready to go into the second section of this. And uh, of this, uh, uh, these chapters tonight. From verse 6 in chapter 3 to the end of chapter 6. And uh, we're going to read here the first uh, four verses of this section. 6 through 10 of chapter 3. The Lord said... Also to me in the days of Josiah, the king, have you seen what backsliding Israel has done? She has gone up on every high mountain and under every green tree, and there played the harlot. And I said, after she had done all these things, return to me. But she did not return. And her treacherous sister, Judah, saw it. And then I said, for all the causes for which backsliding Israel had committed adultery. I had put her away and given her a certificate of divorce, yet her treacherous sister, Judah, did not fear, when, but went and played the harlot also. So it came to pass, through her casual harlotry, that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and trees. And yet for all this, her treacherous sister, Judah, has not turned to me with her whole heart, but in pretense, says the Lord. So, <clears throat> uh, it set, it, you, you, you look here, and it starts off there with Josiah the king. He is the king at the time. And he actually is, a, is an amazing king. And, and uh, Second Kings actually says, like, there's no, there's no other kings like him. And he is one that searches for God. And he tears down uh, high places and everything. And uh, but the people never repent, and and that's the issue. And so um, uh, you think about this is like Jeremiah, really at the peak of like of, uh, existence in Jeremiah's life. The peak of them actually seeking God is right now, the beginning of his ministry, and it only declines. It doesn't. It doesn't get up. Never. It never raises. More people don't start seeking God. It only declines. And declines and declines in this time. In Israel, uh, they have a similar issue. They backslide and then they're taken away. And so this is this is saying is like, man, Israel, you saw what happened. You saw that they they back so that they made they made the idols that they ran away from me that they did after me and uh, and uh, and they played the harlot. And you Judah, you're doing the same. And you saw the. The repercussions, Israel is now led in captivity. And Judah, are you doing the same? The southern kingdom, Israel is the northern kingdom, Judah is the southern kingdom. And uh, and so we see this, 
And then there on that, that last verse I read, chapter 10, it says, And yet for all this, her treacherous sister Judah was not turned to me with her whole heart, but in pretense, says the Lord. In pretense she turned. You know, in NLT it says, she pretended to turn. You know, I, I, I enjoy playing pretend games with my kids. You know, Liesl, she likes to, she has this uh, pretend tea set that we got from Brooke Brewer. Uh, shout out to you, Brooke, if you ever listen to this or it might be on now, I have no clue. But um, uh, she gave us a sweet uh, tea set and I, I, so I drink the fake tea with my pinky up with her and we have fun. And I like to pretend uh, to be a bad guy that has captured uh, Princess of Light, which is uh, Liesl's middle name, Liesl Light. And SJ is the, is the prince and he's trying to get her back. So we have swords and we try to we play. We pretend when we make homemade pizzas, all of a sudden I become Italiano, Mamma Mia, Pizzeria, it's amore. You know, and I, I like doing that with the kids. And there's a time and place to pretend. But when it comes to things with the Lord, don't pretend. Be real with God. He's real with you. He's never coming in pretending. And, uh, and so don't try to cover up uh, what's actually going on. God already knows. He calls, he calls Judah out. He says, he says it. He says they are just in pretense. They are just pretending. I already know this. God knows our hearts. Be real with Him. If you have something going on and He's wanting you to come, Come with everything. You know, you've done something uh, wicked in your past. Come to Him and let Him know. He already knows, but He wants you to come and repent of these things. And He is faithful to forgive you. His Word tells us this. And if you have something that has hurt you uh, throughout history of your life and it has grown you bitter, lay it down. God wants you to move on. Don't come and pretend. Realize. Verse 22. Return of chapter 3. Return, you backsliding children, and I will hear your, heal your, bla- your backslidings. And, uh, and then that next one is, Indeed, we do come to you. For you are the Lord our God. And, uh, and hopefully, this will be us. Hopefully, it will be us. It reminds me of the prodigal son. In Luke 15, 11 through 32, you can flip there. Uh, I don't know that now, but just a brief thing. is uh, If you don't know the prodigal son story, is that, is that um, he is a son to a man, and he asks for his inheritance. And he goes and takes his inheritance waste it. He's eating some slop with pigs. You know, pigs pigs will eat a lot of things. I, I used to raise pigs when I was uh, growing up when I was younger, and they'll eat pretty much anything. And uh, and so he it says that he was eating with the slop of the pigs. And he realizes like, man, my, my, my father has servants who are doing better than me. Maybe he'll accept me. But when he goes back his father runs out and embraces him and loves him and puts him back in the place as a son. Because that's what God wants to do with us. It's a picture. And what a sweet picture. So if you're out there right now or in a later recording of this, that you would go back to him. That you wouldn't be in the backslidden state of life anymore. That you would come to God with it all. Verse 23. Truly in vain is salvation hoped for the uh, for from the hills and from the multitude of mountains. Truly in the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel. Where is your salvation? Where does it come from? Hopefully it's from God. And it's not something of some wood and some stones. You know, they're talking about the idols. But it's from God. Chapter 4, verse 1. If you will, you will return, O Israel, says the Lord, return to me. And if you will put away your abominations out of my sight, then you shall not be moved. And so God's saying, hey, if you return to me, you won't be moved. 
It reminds me of Proverbs 18, 10. He is our strong tower. You know, for him to be our strong tower, uh, we have to be with him. You know, a strong tower, if you're standing outside the tower and someone is shooting that bow and arrow, you, well, that's your fault. You didn't get inside the tower, right? If you're in the tower and that arrow comes and it hits and it, and it, and your way and you're inside the tower, well, it's going to hit that concrete. It's not going through the concrete, right? So be in Trust in Him. Seek Him. And that's Proverbs 18.10. Verse 3 of chapter 4. For thus says the Lord, the men of Judah and Jerusalem, build up your fallow ground. Do not sow among thorns. Lord, move in your life. Don't harden the ground that you are. You know, let the Lord plant the seeds of truth in your life and let Him water of seeds so it will come to fruition. Verse 10. And then I said, Oh Lord, surely you have greatly deceived this, Jeru this people in Jerusalem. So you shall have peace, whereas the sword reaches to the heart. And, uh, and, this, and this verse seems a little different, but it's Jeremiah saying, Lord, like just in simpler terms for me, is like, like Lord, you said you said it would have peace. But right now, this is this is crazy. And, uh, and David Guzik, he says this, It wasn't the Lord God who greatly deceived the people in Jerusalem. It was the false prophets who promised peace when judgment was coming instead. And I think about another proverb, and it says, it says, Better are wounds from a friend than kisses from an enemy. And that's what it seems like that these false prophets were doing. They were just given some, uh, some, some kisses. Make you feel Eventually, you're just going to keep walking, 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 walking away. And, uh, and, 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 and that is going to bring judgment. And so it's good for us to have those friends who will, who will say that we are in the wrong, when we are in the wrong. When they're saying, oh, you're all right, and you, and you know you're in the wrong, you need to check it and see what's going on. Are they truly friends? Because it's good to have. Oh, there it is. Hey, hey are we back? I'm sorry about that. Our internet has been uh, sketchy here. Um, I hope you guys are still able to hear me and listen. Um, can you check on and see? Go on Facebook and look. Yep. And uh, so I'm just going to keep going from where I left off. And uh, it was chapter t or verse 10. And, uh, but we're going to move, uh, well, um, I do, there was something else that says that, like he, he says that he offers peace, you know, and, and so in this time, you know, it was like, it was like, like Jeremiah, he didn't have peace in his life just because he was doing what God called him to do, right? You know, uh, there are times where God calls us and we do have peace. And, uh, and we're good? All right, sweet. Sorry about that all with you guys out there. But um, uh, it kind of got me out, lost on my, where I was at, really. <laughs> but anyways, all right, I'm good. All right, so Jeremiah is in this, and he's wanting to have that peace. And sometimes, God, what's going on? Like, I'm doing the things that you want me to do. And, uh, and, so, and our sin at times, has repercussions. You know, it's just like, if I have the action of hitting this lamp right here, what's going to happen? There's going to be a reaction, that lamp is going to fall. And uh, um, it's gonna, and the, the light is going to break inside it. And then another reaction is, my wife's going to be upset with me, because she likes that lamp a lot. And, uh, and so, uh, I'm not going to hit it. But, I mean, you think about this, biblically, this happens, where... Uh, let's go with Adam and Eve. You know, they they go over and they eat the forbidden fruit, the fruit they're not supposed to eat of, and they eat it, and then what happens next? What's the reaction? Because their action was eating the apple. The reaction was they get kicked out of the garden. And by the grace of God, we don't always uh, uh, walk through the actions, right, of our sins. And um, 
But it does happen. I mean, we can see biblically that is a true statement. But there's also times when we are doing what is pure and what is right and what is holy. And all and our life is set to the Lord. And bad things still happen. You can look at Acts 7. A guy named Steve, he is a chosen guy. He is one that is like highly regarded at the time of being a person that was, was seeking God, that loved the Lord his God with all of his heart and all his mind and all of his strength. And he, and he teaches and preaches this uh, beautiful sermon. And, and, uh, but at, at, in Acts 7, at the end of his life, he gets stoned to death because he was doing what God was calling him to do. He was being pure. He was being holy. And so we can't always take what the outcome is and say, oh, that was wrong or that was right. Because when we, we look at Jeremiah's life, and he's like, what about all this peace? Well, well, he, he didn't ha get to have a bunch of peace in his life. He did have peace with God because he was, doing what, he was doing what God called him to do. And that's what we're called to do. We're not called to have peace with, with everything and everyone here. We're called to have peace with God. And, uh, and we have to make sure we have peace with God. And as we have peace with him, it will be easier to go out and to do what he's called us to do in life. And, uh, and not that it's always an easy task, because Jeremiah didn't have an easy task. And you might not have an easy task. You might be working with some co-workers that are hard to handle. You might have some neighbors that are hard to handle. You might have some friends that are hard to handle. You might have some family members that are hard to handle. But God's not telling you, you've got to figure out how to convert them. He's telling you to love them right where they're at and to seek God on how to love them, moment by moment. Chapter 5, verse 1. Run to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem. See now and know, and seek in her open places, if you can find a man, if there is anyone who uh, executes judgment, who seeks the truth, and I will pardon her. So what he is saying is that if you can go and find a person, just one person, who executes judgment, who seeks truth, I will pardon you. I'll pardon it. I'll pardon everyone. I'll, I'll pardon everything that's going on. Obviously, this doesn't happen. And, um, but this does remind me, it's like, are you a just man? Are you a just woman? Are you a woman seeking truth? Are you a man seeking truth? Are you faithful to that opportunity? Imagine just one person could have changed the outcome of it. Just one person. You know, Tom keeps on always uh, praying for uh, Lafayette, Jeff, and Tecumseh, that just one student would be on fire for the Lord. You know, and that's the same with, with, with our lives. It's like if just one of us went really on fire, it would make a huge difference. It would make a huge difference. Verse 3. O Lord, are not your eyes on the truth? You have stricken them, but they have not grieved. You have grieved them. They have refused to receive correction. They have made their faces harder than uh, rock. They have refused to return. And uh, and um, even in the upheaval of their lives, you know, like everything is going on. Like their life is going to get, really end up being tortured. And they... Uh, on that route, as they crawl through the through the trenches of making their own idols, they never repent. And uh, and it even reminds me of, of Sodom and Gomorrah in Genesis 19. You know, for with that verse of just one man, then all this will be done. You know, God God at that time is like, hey, just give me some some faith, and I won't destroy. This. And as you read in Genesis 19, Sodom and Gomorrah gets destroyed. And there's a lot of grace in those chapters, and in that chapter really. And uh, but they just they're in so more, and they just want to continue to do their own sin so much so at one point they get blind instantly, and they keep seeking their sin. They don't stop and say, "Oh, what happened?" They keep seeking. All right, chapter six, verse seventeen. Also, I set watchmen over 
you saying, Listen to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not listen. And, uh, and so while we're watching it, the ones are supposed to be watching over the city, taking care of the people as they sleep, really. If they, you would have a tower, like a, a wall built around the city. When Angela and I were in Italy, we stayed in a town for a couple months, uh, and like I helped uh, the church to, uh, be a pastor for the church as their pastor went, we came back to the States for Christmas time. And, uh, and, and the apartment we stayed at was right next to the old wall of that town. It's called Feltre, or not Feltre, Ferrara. Feltre was another town, but Ferrara. And, uh, and I mean, the wall was, uh, it was sweet. You could go and walk on the wall. You could run on it. I mean, it was like, like a good amount of the wall was still there. And, uh, and, the, and it would protect the city, and the watchmen were there to protect the city. And, uh, and, and these watchmen didn't care. They had no desire, and uh, and and uh, and so, what are we doing? Are, do we have a desire to watch over our family? To be praying for them, to watch over our friends, to be praying for them, to watch over um, uh, other brothers and sisters at harvest churches. Are we praying for them, watching over them? Are we praying and watching over our own life? Verse thirty. People will call them rejected silver because the Lord has rejected them. And so you got, um, what we went through here in these few verses was that, that Israel went and, um, and went after idols. And then and God said, hey, you need to repent and turn to me or these things are going to happen to you. You're going to be led. You're going to be led. And that's what happens. To and God's telling Telling Judah, the southern kingdom, hey, these things happen to Israel, and these, and this is what's going to happen to you if you don't repent. Come back to me. Quit being the harlot and come back to me. And uh, in that verse 30, there it says, People will call them rejected because the Lord had rejected them. And the Lord only rejected them because they rejected. Rejected God. Sorry about that. Again, this, hopefully, we're going to be wrapping up. This is going to be the last uh, thing here. But God uh, rejects them because they rejected God first. So they became that rejected silver. First Peter 1, 6 through 9. Flip there. And I think this is a good a spot to land on. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, you love. Though now you do not see him, yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of faith, the salvation of your souls. And, uh, uh, you know, and uh, as you think about metal, you know, it gets, it gets stuck in the furnace and it gets heated up. And then what do they do? Like all the stuff that is, that is impure is supposed to be floating to the top and they scrape it off. And they scrape it off. And they scrape it off. And, uh, and so um, that's like the picture is like, like as we walk into these various trials and and everything, um, that we would be refined, that God would remove the impurities out of us, and set us aside to be pure for Him, pure for His glory, not pure for our glory, but pure for His glory. And uh, and so don't reject what God's trying to do in your life. Embrace it, and 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 be like, man, God. You gave me this time of quarantine to be able to, to spend it doing these things or whatever you're going through, you know, and, um, and God has a plan for you and he loves you very much. You know, you look back to Jeremiah and, uh, and he says, I formed you in the womb and I had it and I, and I knew you and, uh, and I ordained you for this. 
And God has a plan for you and a mission for you. And that and that and that really is pretty big. The Lord your God with all your mind, all your heart, mind, and strength, and then to love your neighbor as yourself. And then He is going to do that as He does that, and as, or as you do that, He will speak to you on how to love people and uh, and how to love God through all those trials. But you got to seek Him. Remember, get that fresh gasoline. Don't be using last year's stuff. Get the fresh stuff. And I'm going to pray, and we'll be done for the night. And again, I am sorry about the whole internet connection. I don't know how it's looking for you guys. Um, but it froze on me a couple times. We have some rough internet. But um, hopefully, next week we'll be meeting together, and we'll be doing uh, Facebook Live still, uh, just from the church on Sunday nights. And so let me pray, and we'll finish. God, we come to you, and we thank you for the book of Jeremiah, and we thank you for his faithfulness, uh, even though he is being opposed his entire career as a prophet. God, there's no one that comes to him and, and, uh, and actually backs him up. There's no one that comes to him and says, hey, you're doing a good job there. People would walk uh, the way that you, in the path that you're calling us to go. Not based on all the route or it's a hard route, but based on this is what you called me to do. And, uh, and God, we thank you for speaking to us. We thank you for We thank you that you, Jesus, died on that cross so that we could uh, raise and have life with you. And it's your holy name we pray, Jesus. Amen. If you guys have any prayer requests, you can put them down.